And let us daily recognize and support the men and women who put their lives on the line to keep us, our families, and our homeland secure each and every day. We are counting on you. Be assured, I work without ceasing to be a person and leader you can count on. Let us support each church within the Baintown community and throughout our Bahamas so that they can establish a Take 10 program so that they would take responsibility with our support, financial, moral, and social, to assist those families in need so that we can be a better community and a better country. Thank you, and may God bless each and every one of you. You may not have noticed it, but sitting there, I was engaged in a bigger struggle with the devil. Oh, yeah, the devil was the time and not to have these young men sing. <laughs> no, I was sitting there, and every time he hit me, I hit him back twice. And I said, these young men are going to sing. And so we're going to invite them now to render their selection, following which the Minister of National Security, the individual responsible for the security forces and the security interest of the nation, to come and bring his remarks. Good afternoon, church. Afternoon. To the shepherd of this church, to the messenger for the afternoon, and to my friend, Pastor Purvis Bain, we went to Boys Brigade together. If um, more of you all would let your children go to Boys Brigade, that would help us a lot, wouldn't you say, gentlemen? I didn't bring my campaign speech. <laughs> so I just came. Every, every Tuesday morning I see the Commission of Corrections. Every Wednesday morning I see the Commission of Police. Every Thursday morning I see the Commander of the Defense Force. Every other Monday morning I see the Director of National Intelligence Agency. 
But every day, I see the policemen, defense force officers, the prison officers, customs officers, immigration officers, protecting our country. And I am so happy that we have them who leave home in the mornings and cannot be sure that they'll be back in the afternoon. My father was a policeman. Yesterday was the 25th of July, which made 62 years since he died as an assistant superintendent of police. I can't remember very much about him. All I know is that when people talk to me about him, they say positive things because he was a policeman. And I want the police officers to know, as I want the defense officers to know, as I want the correction officers to know, because they are no longer prison officers. They are corrections officers, and there's a reason for that. That every day when I wake up, I'm concerned about your welfare. Now, you might say, why am I not concerned about customs officers and immigration officers? Not that I'm not concerned. It's just that somebody else has responsibility for them in the cabinet. But Mr. Turner knows, and so does Mr. Pratt, because I'm on the phone to them not irregularly. And we meet, all five of the agencies, leaders meet as members of what we call HONLIA, which is the heads of national law enforcement agencies. It is true that we are going through a very difficult time in the history of our country with crime. And it is true that those of us who, for the moment, have responsibility for the government and for the safety and security of our nation, we work unceasingly to reduce crime to an absolute minimum. We spend a lot of the money that the customs officers collect in order to achieve that. Mr. Pratt told you that last year we spent $1.3 million sending 4,000 illegal immigrants back to the country. And you know by now, two or 3,000 of them are back in the Bahamas. That's why we have the Defense Force. Government is spending $232 million on equipping the Defense Force with a better cadre of vessels. And I don't know if you all have noticed, but recently there has been a considerable improvement in the work of the Defense Force with the new vessels. But there's a lot more that we have to do. We are upgrading the, we are upgrading the base at Coral Harbor. Right now, they're dredging the, the um, harbor at gunpoint in Ragged Island. And at the moment, they're also removing derelict uh, marine craft from the small port in Inagua. Ladies and gentlemen, the prison is undergoing a metamorphosis. We talk about how overcrowded the prison is. We talk about prison officers in a negative way. But I want you to know that it's a new day in corrections in the Bahamas. When we are seeking, you know, people believe that once you commit a crime, you should get locked up and throw away the key. But that doesn't work. And we are seeking to transform our approach to criminals convicted and otherwise. Because right now we have over 1,500 people in the Majesty's prison. And only about half of them have been convicted of anything. Most of them are there on remand. That's something that we have to deal with. I heard the leader of the opposition say, making pledges to you 
uh, officers, law enforcement officers. But I want you to deliver that pledge to me tomorrow. And let's begin working together on this problem tomorrow. Don't let's wait until you win. <laughs> you all understand what I'm saying? If you got solutions, let's deal with this. Let's use it now. What y'all say? I got to turn to my people in the, in the <laughs> you know, I come to this church often. I got to turn to who, 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 who he called the young man of the choir. We, we should work together now, don't you think? That's right. That's right. Yeah, but for, that's the voice of the Lord there saying, that's right. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, this, this is not a, a, an easy task. I could tell you a lot about what we are doing, the government. I really just want you to know that these men and women, whether it's in customs or immigration, whether it's in the prison or the defense force, whether it's in the police force, they work hard yes. under stressful conditions. and they need your support. Don't support me, don't support the government. Support yourself. Support your homes. If we can just drill that into the hearts and the minds of the people of this country, we will make a tremendous difference. I'm now well over 60, and even to this day, with a father who died when I was a very young boy and a mother alone who taught us to leave other people things alone, who taught us respect and dignity. That's all, that's all it was. And so if, if, if someone tries to get me to do something that is out with those parameters, I ain't gonna do it. No matter how much I might be tempted. And that is what we need to put into our children so that when they become parents themselves, they will bring up their children in the same way. Thank you so much. Oh, let me not leave here without recognizing Reverend Dr. C.B. Moss and the work that he does with the Advancement Association with young people in the community. That's what we need. We need pastors and leaders in other areas to go out of their comfort zone and to try to help these young boys and these young girls. The young boys who are leaving school in Baintown, you know, um, only 61% of them go beyond the ninth grade. Why? Because they put them out of school for bad behavior or they suspend them and they don't go back or they drop out of school because of lack of interest. We need to change that. We need to change that. And don't tell me I'm a policeman, that in my job, or I'm a, yes, it's all of our job. So thank you so much for listening to me. Congratulations, uh, Reverend Dr. Moss. And to my friend, Reverend Dr. Bain, we always talk when we come to the stage. He used to live on to Chop Corner, and I lived, I lived on Life on the corner of what is Life Boy Street. I see that now. You when know, Moss gave the name to to, to Chibi. <laughs> <laughs> I lie, eh? <laughs> but yes, um, Mr. M Reverend Dr. Bain used to wait for me on Two Chop. I walk up past the Jumper Church. He hold my hand and carry me to carry me to to, to Wesley Methodist Church Hall. Yes. Let me tell you something. I born in Salem Baptist Church, got christened in St. Agnes Church, went to went to Sunday morning service at Wesley Methodist Church with the Boys Brigade. I got I had so much God in me, I, I couldn't be a preacher. <laughs> But I just want you all to know, you are doing a job for this country, 
that only you can do, because it takes a special kind of individual to be a law enforcement officer. You know, that's a scary job. You, know, you see these young men driving around here to, uh, every night, two of them in a the car, and everybody criticizing them. But you know what they have to face when they get out of a car? And they don't know, especially these young fellas in a Honda. No, this is serious. And they got to get out of their car. Listen, you all got to build them up, man. You all have to build them up and show them you appreciate them. Next time I come, Dr. Mills, I can bring my campaign speech. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you, my good friend, Dr. Nottage. And we grew up just one block apart. I am Young Street and he on Life Boy Street. He said I gave the name of Life Boy Street to Chippy. Actually, it was the government. <laughs> At this time, we're going to invite uh, Bishop Dion Mott, pastor of the Lighthouse Apostolic Ministries. He's going to combine the two prayers for the law officers as well as the Commonwealth of the Bahamas as we try to expedite the service. Thank you. I want you to bow your heads with me. <laughs> Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting unto everlasting, thou art God. We come now, Lord, in remembrance of your many blessings and goodness bestowed upon you. In just a few short years, as an independent people, you have made us great among the nations of the world. For you had said, all men shall call us blessed. Lord, we know that you will strengthen our law enforcement officers. Lord, you will give them the courage and you will give them what they need, Father. Oh God, that they will war a good warfare. That the enemy will know, hallelujah, that God is on our side. Thank you for your blessings today. Thank you for blessing your people, Lord. Thank you for blessing the people in being and grandstand. Thank you, Father, because we know what the enemy's plan for us is. But we here to say to the devil, hallelujah, Jesus, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We shall rise and we shall become great because we know in whom we believe. And we know he's able to do exceeding and abundant above all that we may ask or think. Father, because of the service today, I believe you have given us the enabling power. Now we are ready. We are ready to go out, Lord, and do what you have placed before us. You are ready to do what you have mandated we shall do. Enemy, the Lord Jesus rebuke you. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Thank you, Father. Thank you today. Hallelujah. We are a great people. We are a great nation. And we shall, become, we shall do great things in the name of the Lord. Thank you for all, Father, that are in here today. And we honor and we praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Bishop Mark. Many of those persons out there who are wreaking havoc on this society have little love, little care for anyone. But whatever little love or care they may have retained is for mother or wife or so some woman in their life. And when a woman could mediate a conflict Men are not able to do that. 
on the, on the other side of the coin, who suffers the most? The women. And so based on that analysis, we in our community decide to do something about it. We try to reach women who have, first of all, the understanding of the spirit of love and of God in their lives. And we say to them, you must get involved. We have to turn caring mothers, wives, daughters, and sisters loose to address some of this problem. We call them women against crime. You see some of them sitting over there in white? Women against crime, AKA ambassadors of peace. They have no formal mandate, no authority, no power. Their mandate is the word of God. Their weapon is love, compassion, consideration, understanding. Women who are serious can make a difference. And even though the group is not yet chartered or commissioned, they are already on the job. We're going to ask them to stand, and just for you to get a good look at them. The formal wear is white. Women in white, that sounds good. The red bouquet really signifies the fervency of love. Red is the fervency of love. And these women, we believe, if we can get it formalized, you will see a difference. And we would then be prepared to charter other chapters in other communities where the interest lies. But we have to take control. Mothers can go into a situation that nobody else can go into. Thank you, ladies. A Grandstown man is going to come and sing. His roots go very, very deep in the Grandstown and Bain Town. And so we're going to invite him to come and render a selection for us. Amazing grace How sweet the sound That sings
believe. Can somebody help me out this quiet sing? Praise God. Praise God. That this is a Baptist church, you can say praise the Lord. You can say glory to God. You can even say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you. We greatly appreciate that. We will now invite Apostle Henry Higgins, pastor of the Creative Christian Arts Ministries International, to come with our brief offertory appeal. We do not spend a lot of time on offering because we do not beg. We know that you have that ready. <laughs> and we know before the usher reaches you, you'll be reaching out to the usher, so it shouldn't take long. But we will be listening to the melodious voices of the uh, Royal Bahamas Police Force Choir as the offering is lifted following the appeal. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God a praise today. Isn't God a good God? And the house of God is the best place to be. What you say? Well, I'm happy to be I'm here. My job is very, very easy. Protocol has been established. So what I'm going to tell you is, before I pray, go into your pockets. Pull out the best that you can find to give this evening. That's all I'm going to say. I'm thankful to be I want to say to the police officers and the rest of you, thank you for the work you do in our nation. And we really appreciate you, especially the Windsor Lane people, where my church is. We really appreciate the work you do, especially those patrol car officers. But Venom, you got the best in those patrol cars. They are not, they're with us 24-7, and so thank you so much. And so let's get the best out, and let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you for this day, because this is the day that you have made. And so we've come to rejoice and celebrate it. Father, as we now give into the kingdom, we pray that you'd bless our seed as we give today and may return to us 100 fold. Bless us all now as we sow into this today and we give your praise now in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, 